So, what then is the difference here? Now, if you're thinking the way I used to think, is that this is a very different puzzle in many ways compared to um, the other ones. Anyway, this one is the same as this, so I'm, I'm going to keep this in the background here. As like I say, it's not really solved any differently. But the thing was, is these guys had to be solved as well. Well, my contention is this. This is the same thing. It's another real 4x4, but it's not just a real 4x4 where we have a 2x2 and a 4x4 around that. It's actually a multi-cube. It's a... Uh, it's actually a super multi-cube. It's a real 4x4 super cube. So it's really the same kind of thing as this, only it's a super cube and it can be solved like this. But instead of being a combination of this 4x4 and this 2x2, it's a combination of this 4x4 and this 2x2. And although I, re I kind of reviewed this concept with a real 5x5, just to review it again, what this means is these center pieces here are the 2x2. That's not changed which means this piece, this piece, and this piece are the same. This yellow, blue, and red is just like this yellow, blue, and red. Just like this is one piece, so too these are one pieces. So where then are the center pieces? Well, it looks like these are the center pieces, but in actuality, although they are center pieces, and although they're yellow, just like this side, these are not the yellow-sided center piece. They're not, they don't really belong to that. The center pieces of your side should move with the side that you're moving, right? Move with the face. These aren't moving. So this doesn't belong to the 4x4 uh, side here because it's its own 2x2. Two two. These don't belong to it either. So what are these pieces? Well, the center pieces that move with this side, this yellow side, are these pieces here. And basically what it comes down to is while these are the center pieces of your 4x4 four four in the version 1, these are the center pieces of this face in version 2. So in this face, as I move this, these are the center pieces of the yellow side. However, these are not the center pieces of the yellow side. These are the center pieces of the yellow side because they move right with it. And you may say, well, wait a minute. How can you say they're the center pieces of the yellow side when none of them are yellow? They're these colors. The reason is because these act like the Pachman stickers. So basically, these center pieces are not on the top of the face. They've been squished down to here. The way to look at it is pretend like these are the same puzzle, but something pounded these centers, squished it to the inside, and caused these, uh, rather these centers. Someone pounded these centers, squished these centers down into the puzzle, and popped it out over here. Poked it out over here. So these centers actually are these centers. And the way they work is this piece and this piece are the same. So anytime I move any of these pieces, these two will always move in conjunction with each other. So they're like the two stickered pieces of a Pachman center. So these centers correspond to these centers, which are the same as these, only it's a super cube because the center piece here obviously has a specific place. These centerpieces, or this one centerpiece rather, which is the centerpiece of this side, only belongs in this position. You cannot interchange this piece with this piece. These two pieces, which are the same piece, with these two pieces. No more than you can exchange this piece with this piece. And just like this centerpiece here has two independent colors, two different colors, so too these have two colors. The only difference is that with this, um, 4x4 super cube They have a yellow color to it these centerpieces don't have the yellow color But they've maintained the color of the sides that they're supposed to be lined up with just like these are supposed to be lined up with this side and this side This has to be lined up with this side. This has to be lined up with this side It just happens to be right at where that side is but they are not the centerpieces of these sides or the centerpiece of this side. So I figure, rather than have bizarre algorithms to solve it, couldn't I solve this exactly the same way as a supercube? And so the whole point now is to do just that. Now that we've introduced it, we're going to solve th these with the same version of reduction. So we're going to scramble it up like so. By the way, this is one of my favorite puzzles. I love quote unquote real puzzles, super cubes. And I also love circle cubes. So put it all together. I also like puzzles that are many different puzzles in one. Okay. And there you have it. Now, 
the only correlation that we're going to want to make right off the bat is solving the last two centers. So I just want to point out that uh, I have everything in except the last two centers. What I would do is I would just focus on one of the centers. Uh, so let's take this and put it where it's supposed to be. White and blue, so white and blue is supposed to be here, here's the white, here's the blue. So this obviously belongs down here. Sliding U technique, slide it down from the right, move this piece then to the left, slide it down from the left, back to the right, up on the right, back to the left, up on the left, and back into here. And I'm just going to put everything else in where it's supposed to be. So this guy, well this white has to come down to here, so slide it in exactly the same way as I just focus on one side. And now this guy has to come into this slot. And finally this guy. So notice I'm just focusing on one center. Okay, so this is in. And this one happens to be solved. Now, well, interesting how that works out. Sometimes it works out more like this. So ignore all of this over here, but we find that all this is in, but inevitably two have to be swapped. Well, I'm going to treat these like I would uh, treat any corner, so I'm just going to swap these two here. At this point in the solve, usually these aren't in yet, so just to ignore that. To swap this, I do like any other corner swap. Hold one to the front, one to the top, same technique as a 2x2, two 2R, two, two U, 2R, UI, 2R, my R is of course here, UI, DI, 2R, UI, 2R, U, 2R. This moves back and you find that this is all moved in just fine. Okay, so now the main crux of what I wanted to do here, and that's to show how to solve this by those mechanisms. Solve it the way I did a real 5x5. Five five. So we're going to start off with the 2x2 two two solve. 2x2 two two solve, I've got the, we'll start off with the green side, as I'm apt to do. So I'm looking for the other green and just plop that in here. I know that this is right because this is right. And we'll just move this into place here. And this guy's going to come over here. Turn, turn, turn. So do the 5x5 five five solution of your choice. So this was put in intuitively. These are already placed. Turn it upside down. I'm going to put the blue ones in. So these have to be flipped up to here. I'm just going to R-I-D-I-R-D it until that happens. This is in. Move this one here. Same thing, only twice. R-D. Okay. So basically these are rotated correctly. I look for the two that's in, which is these two. So this has to be flip-flop. So these are the same piece, remember, just like this is. So I hold it over here and I do my swap. 2R U, 2R UI, 2R. Turn the puzzle, 2R UI, 2R U, 2R. And this is turned in. Okay, so you've got your two by two solve. Uh, I hope that wasn't too fast, but it was really the same way that you do here. The whole point of this um, uh, tutorial right now is to go through how you can solve this exactly like a real four by four, exactly like a super cube. So what we're going to do is, if we wanted to put a center in, we'll go ahead and start off here. Now understand, what I'm going to do is I'm going to put all of these pieces in. Why? Because I'm working on this layer here. Now I pointed to this, it's actually not this, I'm working on this layer over here. This layer over here, these are not the centers, these are the centers. The way that I'm going to do that is I'm going to pull it in from other centers. So the first thing I'm going to do is move around, see if there's any that are already in. And I see that, well, not really. So what I'm going to look for is I'm looking for the orange and the green. So let's find an orange and green. Orange and green right over here. I see a green and orange over here. That needs to make its way over to here. So I'm going to move this into position. Move this orange here. So this needs to find its way down here. I'm going to do that with the same sliding U technique that you saw when I was putting these centers in. Or these centers in. Same kind of thing. The only difference is the specificity. So I'm going to move it down from the right, like so. Down from the right. Then I've got to move the top, move it to the left, and then down on the left. But I'm still moving the center because that's what's going to move these 
um, edge piece, this cent these center pieces here. So I've got to move it from the center to move these. So I moved it down, uh, I moved it to the left, down on the left. Move it back to the right, up on the right, back to the left, up on the left, move it back. So you, you can see this is now in. This is not in because this is the same color here, or this is the same piece, so I need the orange and blue. So I'll look for the orange and blue and find it right here. So here's an orange and blue. This has to get over to here. So how am I going to do that? Well, why don't I move it down to here? Now what might be helpful, and I should point this out now, is to do the one, this uh, area that you want to put in, put that upside down. So now this guy has to come down to here. Same sliding U technique, this orange and blue right here. So down on the left, swing it to the, rather down on the right, swing it to the left, down on the left. Swing it back to the right, up on the right, swing it back to the left, up on the left, and move it back in. So you can see this is in, and these are in as well, because they're the same piece. Move it along over here, looking for the blue and red. See if I can find it here. Here's the blue and red, right over here. However, it's not the right blue and red. Why do I say that? Because it likes to be over here. This center area here, by the way, is opposite here. It's not on the same face at all, it's opposite. It's equivalent to this center and this center. So don't be fooled by that. So I'm looking for another blue and red, and I see one right over here. Now what I need to do is just like I had to move the two by two out of position in order to uh, put this into position, is I'm gonna take this and this blue and red, I can't move it like this, right? So I'm gonna have to move both layers like this. So now this is going to come down to here so that this red can be here as well. So that that's going to work is I moved it into position, move it down on the right, swing it to the left. Down on the left, swing it back to the right, up on the right, swing it back to the left, up on the left, swing it back. Now we'll just take this and put it back. So now this is in. Move over to this red piece, or this side over here rather, looking for the red and green. Well, here's a red and green, but you can see it's the wrong one because it's opposite. So find another red and green. Shouldn't be too hard to see right over here. So now it's a question of trying to position and seeing what goes where. Uh, so what I'm going to do is just move this up on the top side here, bring it into position so it's just above where it needs to be here. Same sliding U technique. So I find this way a lot more intuitive, easier, and actually a lot more fun than the others. Okay, so now you can see that all this is in. And what this actually is, is this has become our first center. This has become any one of these. It doesn't look like anything else is solved, but this is our first center, and it's the center that's spread out amongst this entire layer over here. The next thing that I'll do is I'll do the center on the opposite side, so I'll just turn it upside down. Now we're going to do all of these. You can see this one is already in, this green and orange. So let's look for the green and red. Here's a green and red over here. I'm just simply going to move this up, and now this is in position, down on the left, turn it to the, down on the right rather, turn it to the left, down on the left, back to the right, up on the right, back to the left, up on the left. So you need no new algorithms for this. This is in, this is in, okay, this is already in, that's a little gift, blue and orange, find a blue and orange. Let's see, blue and orange. Right over here, here's a blue and orange. So I'm gonna move this up, swing this over. Remember, we gotta swing it from the middle because you won't move the middle piece just by this face, it's the wrong face. So I gotta move it like so, and now bring this down the same way. Down on the right, swing it to the left, down on the left. Swing it back to the right, up on the right, swing it back to the left, up on the left, and just swing it back here. Okay, so now this is in. So as you can see, now both of these sides are in. Both of these centers are in. The next one that we do is, well, any one that you want. Let's go ahead and flip it here. Are there any that's already in on this side? Yeah, this is in. How about this? Nope, not this over here. So let's look for the yellow and the blue. Right over here. Um, now, let's go ahead and move this upside down because again, it's just easier to visualize that way. Uh, so I'm looking for the yellow and blue. Here's the yellow and blue over here. Now I'm gonna come back to this because this belongs here, 
but it's but it's in the same layer. So I'm going to try to bump it out with a real piece that belongs here and bump it back in. So let's pick it up from here. Green and white. So here's a green and white over here. Now this green and white, so green and white over here. Now this green and white is in the opposite layer of here. So it's actually easier than you might think. When you have a, a center that's in the opposite, you just do a 2R to bring it in. Well, so too here, this can get to here by doing a 2R right here, and swing it to the left, do a 2L. Swing it back to the right, 2R, swing it back to the left, 2L, and then swing it back, and you'll find that it's in. So, a little bit of a variation that you may have to do from time to time, but it's really not very difficult. White and blue. Find a white and blue. Right here, white and blue. So, well, it's not the right white and blue because I can't get it to here. So that means I must find a different white and blue. This one. So this one we can move up, bounce it to here. So this one is actually the correct one. Now the good thing about this is as long as I'm isolating layers, you're not going to mess up anything that you put in anywhere else. So it doesn't take a lot of mental gymnastics for that. Okay, we're good here. I need the blue and orange. Yellow, rather. Ha, blue and yellow. Perhaps here, we'll move this up, and it's the wrong one. This, it doesn't fit. So it's not this blue and yellow, it must be another one. Can't take it from down here, can't take it from any of these other layers that have already been solved, so it's gotta be somewhere. Right over here, right in front of me, blue and yellow. So I'm gonna move this up, so you can see how this easily fits down to here. Down on the left, down on the right rather, move it to the left, down on the left, back to the right, up on the right, back to the left, up on the left, and crisplat. So now this side is done. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go upside down and do this side. Upside down we go. Let's see if there's any that's already in. And I don't have high hopes for any that's in already. So we'll worry about it but white and green. So I only have two other sides that I can extract it from. White and green, right over here. So move this into place, down from the right to the left, down on the left, back to the right, up on the right, back to the left, up on the left. So no fancy algorithms, it's just sliding you techniques and positioning. So this is in, how about green and yellow? Here's a green and yellow over here. Let's move the green up, put this in position, and then move it down here. From the right to the left, back to the right, back to the left, and splat. So this is in, and now I have to do the yellow and blue. So notice, even though this looks like the right color, it's not. These two pieces are the same centerpiece, and we want the yellow and blue to be in here. So yellow and blue. Well, I think we can find one here. This guy. Down, turn, down, turn, up, turn, up, turn. Oh, there we go. Okay, so now this is in. Give me a blue and white, and we are done. Here's a blue and white over here. We'll move this to the top. Into position it goes. Down on the right, swing it to the left. Down on the left, swing it to the right. Up on the right, swing it to the left. Up on the left, swing it back home. Okay, so now this is in. So now we have two centers left. That's this layer and this layer. So just like before, it should be getting easier and easier. We're just gonna start moving them all in on, on the one side, just like we did here. We're not gonna do any fancy algorithms of coordinating the last two layers. We don't really need to do that. So white and red should be up here somewhere, it's here. The way this is gonna work is move it to the opposite side and do it twice. 2R here, move it to the left, 2L over here, back to the right, 2R, back to the left, 2L, and back over here. So we got this in, now we just need the red and yellow. It's gotta be up here somewhere, it is. Red and yellow, not this one but this one, because now I can move this red just opposite here, 2R from the middle, turn it to the left, 2L from the middle, turn it back to the right. So this one is exceedingly easy, 
just like so. Okay, so we've got this side here, these centers here. I have one more center to deal with, and that's up here. Now, without turning it upside down, because we're not extracting that, this is going to follow the same rules as we found with the 2 by 2s You're going to have two that are correct. So these two are lined up with each other. So let's put them where they're supposed to be. This is here. This will, of course, be right. And this will be right, because these are the same pieces. When you do it this way, you're always going to find two pieces that are correct. In this case, these two and these two. By correct, I mean next to each other, just line it up. And if these two are not correct, then all you have to do is a corner swap. Same corner swap you saw me do here and here. The way the corner swap goes is it's the same algorithm, 2R, then you move the U from the top, U, 2R, UI, 2R. You do a UI, D, 2R, UI, 2R, U, 2R. Move this back, and it's done. And there it is. So that's an alternative way of putting in all the centers. You do your 2x2 two two solve, and then you do your 4x4 four four center solve. The rest, in terms of reduction, there's absolutely no difference. It's done the same way as you do with a 4x4. Four four. So line these up. Now notice I'm going to be turning things. When I'm turning things, it might look like I'm messing these up. I'm really not. Remember, these are just rotating with the side that's being turned. They're the centers of these sides. So you're not really messing the puzzle up. All you're doing is um, you're keeping them coordinated with the proper side. So you can move them easily back. So all that means is I'm going to take this, move it down to here. This is already in. Put this in place. Same technique. Move it down to bring this to where it needs to be next to this guy here. Bump it out of the way. Bump it out. Move this one in and move it up. So you're not going to mess any of these up in conjunction with the proper side. They just won't be lined up with the right center, but that's easily placed. So green and white, right up here. Same thing, move it down, bump it out of the way, replace it with this piece, move it up. Okay, this comes down to here. Turn it down, turn, 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 and up. Okay, so basically it appears that we have all of these in. Once we have them all in, then we can just line up these centers with the 2x2. Two two. Again, these don't have anything to do with these except for the color. It's a separate 2x2 two two solve that you did, and all I'm doing is I'm lining up the centers of each of these faces with my 2x2 two two solve. Okay, once I've done that, I solve it just like a super cube. Here's the green side. And the way that you solve it from there is I'm going to move my greens to the bottom. And in order to move it up here, with the previous puzzles, I could just move it in and turn it up, but this is going to be not coordinated with it. So I have to move this down to get the green into position, move the green into position with these center pieces, and then move it up. Just like I was moving the edges in conjunction with these center pieces here in the, in the correct way. Okay, moving on, turn, whoop. This has to move in from this direction. Okay, you can see my previous tutorials on how to solve this. If you think I'm going too fast, then that's because it was really just to show how to get the centers in. All right, this has to come up to here, but I can't just move it in because this is out of the way. So I have to con uh, do it in conjunction with this piece here. So I take this, move it to the bottom, bump it out of the way. Now we can move this down so green can go to green, like so, and bring it up. So now I've got the cross put in conjunction with these centers over here. But in reality, I was coordinated with these centers because that's the center of this side. Although it looked like I was coordinated with these green centers, I was really coordinating it with these guys here. It was just easier to follow with the green. Edge placement, rather corner placement. No differences, no tricks here. Move this in like so, out, up, and in. So we have our first side over here. Turn it upside down, and I'm going to want to get these to here. U, R, U, I, R, I. This is the same algorithm of a 3x3, three three, which I'm assuming knowledge of. This comes down to here. So the rest of this is a 4x4 four four super cube. 
of it, so this is all good. Okay, what we have here is we, oh no, we don't have parity, never mind. F U R U I R I F I gets my cross. Now, the way that I coordinate this is you can see this is all in. This is kind of, re this is reduced, this is reduced. These two aren't. So one possibility is that you have one that's reduced and three that aren't. When that happens, you hold this in front of you and you keep doing R U R I U R to U R I. What you're going to notice is this stays the same, but these guys have shuffled around. So if you have one that's in and three that are out, just keep doing that over and over again. Eventually they'll all be in. This is that situation where one is in and, well, two are in and two are out. If that happens, make sure they're not next to each other. Pick one, put it in front of you, do R U R U R T or I, your SUNY, until you have them opposite each other. So either none of them are in, if none of them are in, do the SUNY and wait until you have one that's in. If one that is, if there's only one that's in, do it again over and over again until they're all in. If you end up with two that are in and two that are out, well, that was a similar situation that we saw with the parity of this guy and this guy. So what we're going to have to do is the same thing. I can't fix it by doing the 2u, 2r, 2f version of the u or f algorithm. I have to do the uh, super cube version of that. It's one of the longer algorithms that I have to keep stored in my memory banks, but it's doable if you just keep to the URF format. So that's going to be ui, r, f, i, u, r, i, f. Do middle u, do middle di, then do f, i, r, u, i, f, r, i, and then bring this back with a di. Uh, the middle was a d, not a di. Anyway, so it'll put, bring that back. All of these are in. The way to do it next is try to get the corners in. Don't move these now. Once they're there, just save yourself a lot of hassle. Keep them where they're at. So do the algorithms to rotate these guys around. Are any already in? Uh, this one is. Keep this to the right. U, R, U, I, L, I, U, R, I, U, I, L. And you just do that until all of them are in. They're all in, but none of them are rotated. So we just keep doing R, I, D, I, R, D, R, I, D, I, R, D. This is now in. Move this into position, do the same thing. We just float all around the puzzle doing this until all of these are in. It just so happened that none of them were in, so it just takes a little while longer. R, D, R, I, D, I, R, D. D, one more time. R, D, and this is in like so. So, there it is. Uh, I think a much simpler and more straightforward way of solving the crazy 4x4 version 1 and version 2, which you can, for all sense and purposes, call a real 4x4. So we can return that there. Uh, so you all have this. To those who lament not at the moment being able to get a real 5x5, five five, uh, most of you probably have a real 4x4 four four and you can solve it the same way. Try that method. It's, it's actually a lot of fun. But I actually now have a challenge for you. The challenge. And the prize will be bragging rights, and perhaps a little bit more. But what the challenge is, is to solve this puzzle, the version 2, or the version 3, doesn't really matter, is to solve the version 2 layer by layer. What I mean by layer by layer is you start off with the first layer, which is this. That means this is solved, all these are solved, these are solved, and these ones are solved as well. So this whole layer is solved. Then you solve the second layer. And then you solve the third layer, and then the fourth layer last. So that's what I'm looking for, is to solve this puzzle layer by layer. To those who get it first, I'll be looking for that. The challenge of this is it's not like a layer by layer solve of other puzzles, because you're actually doing a layer by layer solve like this, only you have to do different centers instead of the center up here. That's kind of what it comes down to. So an entire layer by layer solve where you have this whole side, this whole side here, including all these pieces here, as well as this. It's a very challenging solve. If there's any problems with that, I'll come back at you with a solution. So let me know what you think. Thanks for watching.